Hello everybody, Terry Terry back again with another video and today's video is guys going to be about I got a request yesterday, someone said to me Please Inter, can you do a video about why Novak Djokovic is better tennis player than both Rafa Nadal and Roger Federer And I'm going to do a video about that topic today uh, I'm going to explain to you guys why Novak Djokovic is a better tennis player than Rafa Nadal and Roger Federer And let's get into this video guys without any further ado I'm going to do a top six list why I consider Novak Djokovic to be a better tennis player than Rafa Nadal and Roger Federer. Then, some of you maybe agree, some of, some of you maybe doesn't agree. I'm going to give my honest opinions like I always do, guys. And let's get into this. On, on my number six place, guys, why I, have Roger, uh, why I have Novak Djokovic as a better tennis player than uh, Rafa Nadal and Roger Federer, is all of his masters that he has won, 36 masters, guys, so far during his career at the current moment. R Novak Djokovic has won 36 masters. And maybe some of you take this master thousand titles lightly, but I don't. It is not easy winning masters, guys. More or less, the, all the best players in the world uh, compete there. You need to win all the matches. You play against top, top quality opponents. And it, it is not easy winning Masters. If, the, if that was the case, why did, why, why did Pistol Pete Sampras won only 11 Masters, guys? He, do you know that he won only 11 Masters? And trust me, guys, he wanted to win Masters. It, it was not like he was taking the Masters lightly. But he just couldn't because it is not easy. And Andre Agassi, he won 17 Masters. And before Federer, before Nadal, before... Djokovic came up to the scene before they started winning all these masters. Andrew Agassi had this record actually guys. He, he with 17 master 1001 titles. He was the record leader here with 17. What has Djokovic done? He has won 36 almost double as masters as Andrew Agassi. Agassi 17 who was the record holder before Novak Djokovic and before Nadal and before Federer came up to the scene, Djokovic has won 36. And what makes this even more special, he has won all the Masters. All of those nine Masters Novak Djokovic has won. No one has ever done that in the tennis history, you know that? And if this was not enough, he has won all the Masters twice, Novak Djokovic. So how can you take that kind of big achievement lightly? That is a huge achievement, guys. That is a huge achievement. Even though that is a huge achievement, I have that on my number six place. So this is only an indicator that Novak Djokovic has done even more greater things during his career. But all right, I will, I will give, I will have that great achievement from Novak Djokovic winning all the Masters and winning all the Masters twice, not once, twice, something, something his top chief rivals has never done. Fed has never done it and Natal has never done it. They have never won all the Masters once, let alone twice. So, there you have it. Novak Djokovic, of this top six, eight list, why? He is a better tennis player than both Federer and Nadal. I have... Uh, Novak, Novak Djokovic, 36 most 1,000 titles won on my, on my number 6 place. On, number f on my number 5 place, I have all his uh, being a world number 1 in the weeks, guys. Like we know, he just breaked Federer's record with th 311 weeks. That is a huge milestone, guys. That is a huge milestone. Like I said a couple of days ago, just being world number 1 one week is hard enough. We have many players during the, this over the 100 years that has not ever been uh, world number one, but they have won Grand Slam titles. So that is an indicator, that is a proof, that is an argument that being world number one is not that everyone can be, guys. Being world number one is not easy, guys. And it is one thing to be world number one, it is a completely different story 
staying as world number one as long as Novak Djokovic has done. 311 weeks and it is and, and this will only continue guys because he will not drop that world number one ranking anytime soon guys so he can even be 350 weeks as world number one and I would not be surprised if he even gets to four, 400 weeks as world number one I will not be I will not get surprised at all guys so being world number one as many weeks he's the he's the record holder now after breaking Feather's record, Novak Djokovic with 311 weeks at the current moment when I'm recording this video today. And that is a huge milestone. And that I have I, I need to have that on my list. So on my on, on my number fifth place as to be one uh, 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 in, in this uh, top six list, why Djokovic is better test player than Federer and Nadal, I have on my on, on my number fifth place, I have Djokovic as world number one, as many weeks as he has been. Because guys, if you look at the current the recent time, we have players who have won Grand Slams but never been world number one. Vavrika, I told you guys a couple of days ago, he has won three Grand Slams, never been world number one. He has actually not, not even been world number two, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Stan Vavrika. We have Mane Cilic, he has won one Grand Slam title, he has never been a world number one. I don't think he has even been a world number two. Crack me down below if I'm, if I'm mistaken. I don't think so. Mane Cilic has never been a world number two. He has won a Grand Slam title. And then we have Del Potro, guys. No, don't, not to forget Del Potro. He won his first and only Grand Slam title back in 20, 20, 2009 US Open. He has never been a world number one either. I don't think he has even been a world number two, if I'm not mistaken. So none of these Grand Slam winners, Vavrinka, Del Potro, Cilic, they are all, they have all three of these players has won Grand Slam titles. But they have never been world number one, even not even world number two. So this is a proof that... It is not easy becoming world number one, and it is even harder staying as world number one as long as Novak Djokovic has done with 311 weeks at the current moment, and he will all, and it, and this will only be, be better and better because he will not drop that world number one ranking anytime soon. So that uh, that uh, that big achievement from Novak Djokovic is on is on my number fifth place. On my number fourth place, guys, I have Novak Djokovic. Huge achievement as well as year-end number one, guys. Year-end number one is not a lightly thing to take easy as well, guys. Because it is he is the record holder there as well, together with Pistol Pete. He equaled Pistol Pete's record last year with six years as year-end number one. And that is not easy as well, guys. It is one thing to be world number one for one, one week, and two weeks, and one month, and five months, and six months, but to... And the year as world well, number one, uh, it is not an easy thing to do as well. Fed and Nadal, they have done it five times. Djokovic has, is better than them there with six years. Djokovic is the record holder there together with Pistol Pete. And he has all the chances in the world. I truly believe he will break that record this year with seven years. Uh, because uh, uh, Djokovic... Is the world the current world number one now? Djokovic is the man to is the player to beat on the biggest events, guys like Wimbledon and like US Open. So Djokovic, well, he will most likely win two slams this year. He will most likely win two slams. I truly believe that. He has only already won one, like we know, Astral Open last month, and. It is not even impossible for him to win three, but three, I believe it will be difficult. I will be honest, it will be difficult. It is not impossible, but three majors for Djokovic to win in one single year. He has done it twice in, in his career before, 2011 and 2015. But uh, he was, uh, from, uh, in my opinion, he was a, a better tennis player back then for me. He's, he's not much worse today, but he is, he is little worse. He is. He, he doesn't hit the ball as hard as before. He, he, he doesn't move as great as before. He still moves exceptionally good, absolutely. Don't, don't, mis don't mi misunderstand me. But he's not hitting the ball as hard as before. I know that. I can see that with my eyes. And uh, he, so I feel that Djokovic is... The only thing maybe Djokovic is doing better nowadays, not maybe, he's doing better nowadays than before, when he won those three majors in those two years, 2011 and 2015, six majors in total, those two golden years that Djokovic had, he's serving better nowadays. He's serving much better nowadays than he did before. But he's not hitting his back as good as before. He's not moving as good as before. He's not hitting the ball as hard as before he did. So, so 
I don't think he will win three majors this year, but it is not impossible. Absolutely not. I would not be shocked if he wins three majors, but I believe he will win two. So if he wins two majors, which I believe he will do this year, uh, Novak Djokovic, then he will most likely, he will end the year as world number one. So I believe Novak Djokovic will end the year as world number one in 2021 and be the record holder alone. Because now at the current moment, he's the record holder together with Pete Sampras with six years. So on my number fourth place, I have Novak Djokovic, huge achievements, big milestone as being year and number one for six years, like he uh, beca became last year. All right, so we go on guys. On my number third place, why I have Novak Djokovic as a better tennis player than both Nadal and Federer. Guys, this dude, has beaten Roger Federer and Rafa Nadal in all the slams. He's the only player who's ever done it. You know that? He has beaten Rafa Nadal in all the slams. That is a huge achievement, guys. Don't forget that. He has beaten Rafa Nadal in Astral Open. He has beaten Rafa Nadal in French Open once. But he has done it back in 2015. And don't come up with me here, Rafa fans, and say Rafa was hurt. Rafa was bad that year. Do you think I care about that? Do you think I Calculate that. I don't care about that. He was there to compete. He won his four straight. He won. He won his four first matches in that 2015 French Open. Rafa Nadal in straight sets. If he was that weak, why didn't he lose the third or fourth round? No, he lost to Novak Djokovic in the quarterfinal. Straight set. Bam, bam, bam. So don't come up with me with all these excuses. I hate when people come with excuses. You, you, I, have you not noticed? I never come with excuses. If he was there, he was compete. If he was, and I've heard the same thing back in 2009 when he lost to Söderling. For God's sake, give the guy credit, Robbie Robbie, Robbie Söderling, back in 2009 when he just out powered Rafa Nadal from the baseline. He just was hitting bombs, serving bombs, hitting huge forehand, hitting huge backhand. He was out hitting Rafa Nadal from the baseline. He was. Hitting through him with a bunch of winners, I believe he certainly did 60, 61 winners, something like that, in that 2009 French Open match. So don't come up with excuses and say, Rafa was hurt. It is always like this. When Rafa loses, especially in French Open, like he's lost two matches, he was hurt. For God's sakes, give his opponents a credit. The same thing to Djokovic. He did a fabulous match, Novak Djokovic, that 2015 French Open quarterfinal. He did 45 winners, for God's sakes. That is a lot of winners to do against a, a defensive machine, a defensive monster like Rafa Nadal. So, all the credit. And Novak Djokovic has defeated all of his top, his top two shoot rivals in all the slams. He's defeated Nadal. At, at the Asal Open, at the French Open, at the Wimbledon, at the US Open. He has, been, he has done the same to Federer. He has defeated Federer at the Asal Open, at the French Open, at the Wimbledon, at the US Open. And if you look at his, if you look at his top, top, top shift rivals, Nadal and Federer, have they done the same? No. Federer has defeated, yeah, he has defeated Federer. He has defeated Djokovic in all the slams, Asal Open, Wimbledon, Asal Open, French Open, Wimbledon, and Yes, Open, but Federer has not defeated Nadal in all the four slams. Federer has defeated Nadal in only two slams, Astral Open and Wimbledon. Never in French Open, and they have never faced in US Open, like we all know. And Nadal, he has not, not defeated his top, his top two shift rivals in all, four, in all four slams. He has not defeated Djokovic in all the four slams. He has not defeated Federer in all four slams. Djokovic has defeated in Wimbledon, in US Open, and in French Open, of course, but he has never defeated uh, Novak Djokovic at Astral Open, no, uh, Rafa Nadal. And Roger Federer, he has not defeated uh, in, uh, in US Open because they have never faced each other. But he, he has defeated him at Astral Open, of course, and Wimbledon and uh, 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 in French Open. So there you have also a big milestone from Ro uh, Novak Djokovic. He has defeated his top shift rivals in all the four slams, guys. That is a huge, huge achievement. At least according to me, I don't know what you think. So I have that as my number third place, guys. On my, on my number, I'm, I'm sorry, I have that on, on number third place. Yes, on my number second place, guys, I have a stat that many people, some people talks about that, but uh, I've not heard about that way too much. And that is Djokovic is the only third player in history, guys, you know that, to hold all the four Grand Slams at the, one, at the once, at the same time. 
to hold all the four Grand Slam. And he did that back in 2015-2016. When he won Wimbledon in 2015, US Open in 2015, and then he won Austral Open in 2016, and then he won French Open in 2016. The difference only is here that he has not done like Donald Budge did it back in 1938, even though it was not a professional era back then, but it's still. He won all the four majors, Donald Budge, in 1938. And Rod Laver did it twice in 62, also in a in amateur era. But what Rod Laver did was back in 69, when, the, when it was a professional era, he did it for the second time, Rod Laver, back in 19, 1969, won all the four majors in the same calendar year. So, Donald Budge and Rod Laver, they have done it in the same calendar year, so that is a bigger achievement than Djokovic, in my opinion. Uh, especially Rod Laver's uh, huge, huge, huge achievement back in 1969 when he did it in a professional era. If you compare that when he did it in 62 in an amateur era and also Donald Budge in 38 in an amateur era. But Djokovic, he had at least done it in two different years. And so he has hold all these four Grand Slams at the, at the same time. So that is a huge achievement. We cannot deny for that huge achievement. Something Nadal, something Federer has never done. My tennis friends all around the world. Like I said, only two previous players have done it. They did it better than Djokovic in the same year. But Djokovic... Djokovic's achievement is not bad, guys. It's not bad. It is unbelievable great achievement to hold all four Grand Slams at the same time. Winning all the four, winning four straight Grand Slams, guys, in ten, it is one of the hardest things to do in tennis. It is so difficult, hard to do. To do it in the same calendar year, it is outrageously hard, guys. It is monstrous hard. It is unbelievable hard to do in the same calendar year. But, so, uh, Djokovic has not done it in the same calendar year. But, he has done it in two different years. That is a huge achievement as well. That is a huge achievement as well. He's the, oh, he's the only third player to hold all the four Grand Slams tournaments at the same time. After Donald Butch and Rod Laver. Even though he didn't do the same calendar year like those two, do, like those two dudes did. So, I have that on my number second place, Djokovic winning all the four Grand Slams, or Djokovic holding all the four Grand Slams, Wimbledon, US Open, Asel Open and French Open at the same time in two different years, 2015, 2016. All right, guys, we go now to my number one. And number, my number one, guys, it, it is for me, we, without any shadow of a doubt, on my top spot, why I have Novak Djokovic as, uh, as a better tennis player than both Federer and Nadal. Guys, when, when Federer was dominating the tour between 2003 to 2010, he won 16 Grand Slam titles that, that, those seven, eight years. 16, guys, that's a lot. If you take out those 2010, 2009, 2008, if you look at Federer's achievements and, won, and, when he won, and when he was winning those big Grand Slam tournaments between 2003 and 2007, he won 12 Grand Slam titles. And then came a player named Rafa Nadal. Everybody was saying, what is this dude, this, this Swiss superstar winning all these slams? Nobody can challenge him. Nobody can stop him. He's, he's, he's making tennis looking so easily. so easily. Nobody can stop him. Nobody can challenge him. He's winning all the majors. All the majors. It was, like, it was not even fun to watch. It was fun to watch as a Federer fan, of course, like I am. But not as a not Federer fan also not, or, not, or like a natural fan of tennis. Because he, it was not, he, it was not any excitement on the on the air. Because we, we knew who, who, who were winning the majors. It was Roger Federer, 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 Federer. Federer. He won three majors in two thousand four, three majors in two thousand six, three majors in two thousand seven. So only these three big years that Federer had two thousand four, two thousand six, two thousand seven, he won nine majors. Then came a player, Rafa Nadal, who started to challenging him. Beginning of two thousand five. Uh, starting in French Open, of course, Rafa Nadal was beating Ro Ro Roger Federer all the time in French Open, starting in 2005, 2006, 2007, and then also defeated Federer in his own living room in 2008, in that epic Wimbledon final 2008, like, like we all remember. So we, we got a player that started to challenge Roger Federer, and Rafa Nadal picked up from 2005 to 2010, nine Grand Slam titles, all right? So, these, these two players, Federer, they were on the top of the world of tennis, and then Rafa Nadal started to challenge him, all right? Djokovic, he, he made an impact in the beginning of 2008. At the beginning, 
I should say in the end of 2007, when he played his first Grand Slam final in the US Open 2007, and he faced uh, Roger Federer there, he lost his straight set, that US Open final 2007, even though that straight set victory for Roger Federer is a little misleading, because Djokovic had actually set points both in the first and the second set in that 2007 US Open. But Djokovic started to make a name of himself, and people started to... to, to, to to look at him and watch him and say, oh, maybe this is a new superstar. And when Djokovic then defeated Federer in that 2008 as Open semi-final, he straight sets. Jo Federer was on the top of the world. Uh, the, Djokovic, he shocked the world. He for, he, he for sure shocked me. I, I, I'm going to be honest to you guys. When Djokovic, when Fed, when Radar lost to Tsonga, I remember that 2008 semi-final as Open, uh, because it was Radar who was Federer's biggest a challenger back then. He, because he was he, he just pushed Roger Federer to a five set battle in Wimbledon 2007, uh, just six, seven months earlier before that Astral Open 2008. And it, it, as a Federer fan, I was fearing Rafa Nadal. So when Rafa lost to Tsonga in that semi final, I remember that semi final was played on the Thursday against Tsonga, I was more or less kind of little celebrating. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I thought that, oh, no, Federer will win this, uh, this Astral Open now. Because Federer just came out from 2007 winning three majors, for God's sakes. I didn't, and he defeated Djokovic in that US Open final 2007, straight sets. So I thought that, all right, this is a, straight, this is a victory. This is a title one for Ro Roger Federer uh, uh, in Astral Open 2008. Bang! Novak Djokovic defeated Roger Federer. Straight set. Bang, 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 bang. And then also David Tsonga in that Astro Open final 2008 in four sets. And then we saw, then we thought, oh, maybe a new superstar is born. All right. We had Rafa Nadal challenging Roger Federer after Roger Federer just was crushing the tour and was winning so many majors for four, five, six years. Rafa Nadal started challenging Roger Federer. Then, then we thought, at least me, maybe now we have a new superstar, a 20-year-old Serbian player from Serbia, who will start challenging Roger Federer and maybe Rafa Nadal as well. But then Djokovic disappeared for three years. He didn't do anything for three years. Didn't win any major 2009, didn't win any major 2010, and didn't win any more majors in 2008 besides that Astral Open title 2008. But then all of a sudden, BAM! Novak Djokovic comes in 2011, win three majors, just crushes the tour, especially the first six months, going undefeated for five, six months until Federer stopped him in that French Open semi-final. And then BAM! 2012, he wins the epic, the longest Grand Slam final ever, almost six hours, five hours and 53 minutes against Rafa Nadal in that 2012 Astral Open final. He wins only one Grand Slam title that year. 2013, he, won, he wins one Grand Slam title that year, Astral Open. 2014, he wins only one Grand Slam title that year, Astral Open. 2015, he does an absolutely outrageous year with three Grand Slam titles and win and defeats Rafa Nadal in that French Open quarterfinals, become only the second player to ever defeat Rafa Nadal at the French Open. So the Djokovic era started. So what does Djokovic do? Yeah. He takes down Rafael Nadal and he takes down Nova, uh, Roger Federer, the two greatest tennis players of all time that year. J Federer at the current moment where Novak Djokovic big era, where Novak Djokovic big breakthrough started in 2011. Federer at that current time, at that current moment, was a 16 times Grand Slam champion. 16 times. Rafa Nadal, when, Rono, when Novak Djokovic era started in 2011, was a nine time Grand Slam champion. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, nine time, yes, nine time Grand Slam champion. When the 2011 started, when Novak Djokovic started to dominate. So we have a player, Roger Federer, who was a 16 times Grand Slam champion at the beginning of 2011. And we have a player, Rafa Nadal, who was a nine time Grand Slam champion at the beginning of 2011. And Novak Djokovic, when he started the 2011 season, he was only a one-time Grand Slam champion. One time with the Astral Open title 2008. And look what he has done! He has just eaten and eaten and eaten and eaten himself up to that Grand Slam race. And he's only two behind Roger Federer and two behind Rafa Nadal in the Grand Slam race. He has dominated the tour more or less for 10 years now. He has won 50, uh, uh, 17 Grand Slam titles since 2011. 17 Grand Slam titles. You know that? 
Federer has won only five Grand Slam titles since 2011. Only five. Rafa Nadal. He has, he has challenged uh, uh, Novak Djokovic. He's the only one who's challenged Novak Djokovic more than what, jo what, what, what Federer has done. Because Nadal, he, 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 he was a nine times Grand Slam champion uh, when Novak Djokovic started his era back in 2011. Now Nadal is a 20 times Grand Slam champion. So Nadal has won 11 Grand Slam titles since the Novak Djokovic era started back in 2011. So Nadal... All props to Nadal. He has challenged Novak Djokovic. Uh, mostly on, uh, at French Open, but we cannot say only on French Open because he has defeated him uh, in... in uh, at... Well, at, at, uh, I'm so, uh, at uh, US Open as well. He did that uh, in 2013. So, uh, at the, uh, so, so Nadal has challenged Novak Djokovic much more than Federer. So Nadal, since 2010, he has won nine Grand Slam titles. I'm sorry, uh, 11, Grand Slam, uh, 11 Grand Slam titles. 11. 11 Grand Slam titles. Federer has won only five Grand Slam titles since 2011, since Novak Djokovic started this unbelievable era. So... When Novak Djokovic started his unbelievable era back in 2011, he had only one Grand Slam title. Federer had six, 16 Grand Slam titles, Nadal had nine Grand Slam titles. And look what no Novak Djokovic has done. He has taken down his top two chief rivals, both of them, especially Federer, but Nadal as well. He has stopped Fe Roger Federer from winning Grand Slam titles because Federer has won only five Grand Slam titles since 2000. Only, only four Grand Slam titles since 2011. And Nadal has won 11 Grand Slam titles since 2011. Great number from Rafa Nadal. But he has stopped both of them, especially Federer. And he has all the chances in the world, when, it's all, when, when, when it will be all said and done, to be on top with Grand Slam titles. He has all the chances in the world if he keeps himself injury-free. So on my number one place, I have Novak Djokovic, why he's better tennis player than both Rafa Nadal and Roger Federer? He has stopped these two giants from winning over 25 Grand Slam titles. If he didn't come around, I can swear to you guys, both Federer and both Nadal would have had over 25 Grand Slam titles won at the current moment, at the current day, today. I swear that to you guys, 2021... 10th March, I believe it is 10th March today, 2021, 10th March, Novak, uh, Rafa Nadal and Roger Federer, Roger Feder, they both would have had at the current moment, at the current day, over 25 majors won. If that was not because of Novak Djokovic, huge dominance, which started back in 2011. And he has won 17 majors since 2011. R Roger Federer has won only 4 majors since 2011 and Rafa Nadal has won 11 majors since 2011. Novak Djokovic, 17 majors since 2011. There you have my number one spot, guys, why Novak Djokovic is the better tennis player than both Rafa Nadal and both Roger Federer. He, he did the unbelievable achievement. He did the almost mission impossible achievement to take down two, two of the greatest tennis players of all time and now he has a chance to become the greatest tennis player of all time alone Novak Djokovic after doing this huge huge achievement which is on my number one place to take down two of the greatest tennis players of all time Roger Federer and Rafa Nadal in 10 years time he's been dominating the tennis tour more or less in 10 years time so there you have my list guys I will go and I say my list again from, from my number 6th place. On my number 6th place, I have all the masters that Djokovic has won, 36 at the current moment. And he has done it this unbelievable feat twice. Not something that no male player has ever done it. Not even once, let alone twice. And, the, and, and Djokovic is the only player who has done it. On my 5th place, I have as week number 1. He, where he breaks that record uh, a couple of days ago with 311 weeks as world number one and this will only continue on our fourth place as the year end number one with six years equally uh, Pete Sampras record last year and I think he will break this record with seven years this year on our third place I have beating all his beating his top 
top shift rivals in all the slams. Novak Djokovic is the only one who has done it. Nobody male players ever done this unbelievable achievement before to beat Federer and Nadal in all the slams. On our second place, I have holding all the four Grand Slams all together at the same time. Something that only two other players has done, Donald Budge and Rod Laver. They did it in the same calendar year, but Novak Djokovic's achievement is also great, even though it is not in the same calendar year. And on our first place, I have Novak Djokovic's ability to take down his top shift rivals, Federer and Nadal, for 10 years now and winning so many majors for 10 years and stopping Federer for winning over 25 majors and stopping Rafa Nadal for winning over 25 majors. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and see you next time. Peace.